Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo 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 Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hare Krishna. We're studying Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 2, Chapter 9, entitled Answers by Citing the Lord's Version. We're on text 34. It's June 6, 2021. We're on text 34. Narayanam namas kritya naram chaivana uttamam devim sarasvatim vyasam tato jayamudiraya. Before reciting this Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should first offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of the God in Narayan, to Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, to Mother Sarasvati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta praya shrabhadra shu nicham bhagavata sevaya, bhagavat yutamashloki bhakti bhavati naishtiki. Okay. Rite. Um, Rite. Artam. Artam. Yat. Yat. Pratieta. Pratieta. Na. Na. Pratieta. Pratieta. Cha. Cha. Atmani Atmani Tat Tat Vidyat Vidyat Atmana Atmana Mayam Mayam Yata Yata Abasa Abasa Yata Yata Tama Tama Riter tam yat pratieta. Riter tam yat pratieta. Na pratieta chatmani. Na pratieta chatmani. Tadvidyat atmano mayam. Tadvidyat atmano mayam. Yata baso yatatama. Yathaba so yathatama. Riter tam yat pratieta. Riteri tam yat pratieta. Na pratieta chatmani. Na pratieta chatmani. Tadvid yad atmano mayam. Tadvid yad atmano mayam. Yathaba so yathatama. Yathaba so yathatama. Riter tam yat pratieta. Riter tam yat pratieta. Na pratieta chatmani. Na pratieta chatmani. Tadvid yad atmano mayam. Tadvid yad atmano mayam. Yathaba so yathatama. Yathaba so yathatamaha. Would anyone else like to recite the verse? Reiter tam yat pratieta. Reiter tam yat pratieta. Na pratieta chatmani. Na pratieta chatmani. Advidyadat mano mayam. Advidyadat mano mayam. Yata vaso yata tamaha. Yata vaso yata tamaha. Riter tam yat pratieta. Riter tam yat pratieta. Na pratieta chatmani. Na pratieta chatmani. Avidyadat manomayam. 
We'll go to the word for word. Rite. Rite. Without. Without. Artam. Artam. Value. Value. Yat. Yat. That which. That which. Pratieta. Pratieta. Appears to be. Appears to be. Na. Na. Not. Not. Pratieta. Pratieta. Appears to be. Appears to be. Cha. Cha. And. And. Atmani. Atmani. In relation to me. In relation to me. Tat. Tat. That. That. Didyat. Didyat. You must know. You must know. Atmana. Atmana. My. My. Mayam. Mayam. Illusory energy. Illusory energy. Yata. Yata. Just as. Just as. Abasa. Abasa. The reflection. The reflection. Yata. Yata. As. As. Tama. Tama. The darkness. The darkness. Translation. Oh, Brahma, whatever appears to be of any value, if it is without relation to me, has no reality. Mm -hmm. Know it as my illusory energy, that reflection which appears to be in darkness. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. In the previous verse, it has already been concluded that in any stage of the cosmic manifestation, its appearance, its sustenance, its growth, its interactions of different energies, its deterioration and its disappearance, all has its basic relation with the existence of the personality of Godhead. And as such, whenever there is forgetfulness of this prime relation with the Lord and whenever things are accepted as real without being related to the Lord, that conception is called a product of the illusory energy of the Lord. Because nothing can exist without the Lord, it should be known that the illusory energy is also an energy of the Lord. The right conclusion of dovetailing everything in relationship with the Lord is called yoga maya, or the energy of union. And the wrong conception of detaching a thing from its relationship with the Lord is called the Lord's Devi maya, or maha maya. But both the mayas also have connections with the Lord because nothing can exist without being related to him. As such, the wrong conception of detaching relationships from the Lord is not false, but illusory. Misconceiving one thing for another thing is called illusion. For example, accepting a rope as a snake is illusion, but the rope is not false. The rope as it exists in the front of the illusion person is not at all false, but the acceptance is illusory. Therefore, the wrong conception of accepting this material manifestation as being divorced from the energy of the Lord is illusion, but it is not false. And this illusory conception is called the reflection of the reality in the darkness of ignorance. 
Anything that appears as apparently not being produced out of my energy is called Maya. The conception that the living entity is formless or that the Supreme Lord is formless is also illusion. In the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, text 12, it was said by the Lord in the midst of the battlefield that the warrior standing in front of Arjuna, Arjuna himself, and even the Lord had all existed before. They were existing on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, and they would all continue to be individual personalities in the future also. Even after the annihilation of the present body and even after being liberated from the bondage of material existence. In all circumstances, the Lord and the living entities are individual personalities and the personal features of both the Lord and living beings are never abolished. Only the influence of the illusory energy, the reflection of light in the darkness can by the mercy of the Lord be removed. In the material world, the light of the sun is also not independent, nor is that of the moon. The real source of light is the Brahma, is the Brahma Gyoti, which diffuses light from the transcendental body of the Lord. And the same light is reflected in varieties of light. The light of the sun, the light of the moon, the light of fire, or the light of electricity. So the identity of the self as being unconnected with the supreme self the lord is also illusion and the false claim i am the supreme is the last illusory snare of the same maya or the external energy of the lord the vedanta sutra in the very beginning affirms that everything is born from the supreme and thus as explained in the previous verse all individual living entities are born from the energy of the supreme living being, the personality of Godhead. Brahma himself was born from the energy of the Lord, and all other living entities are born from the energy of the Lord through the agency of Brahma. None of them has any existence without being dovetailed with the supreme Lord. Recording. The independence of the individual living entity is not real independence, but is just the reflection of the real independence existing in the Supreme Being, the Lord. The false claim of supreme independence by the conditioned souls is illusion. And this conclusion is admitted in this verse. Persons with the poor fund of knowledge become illusioned, and therefore the so-called scientists, physiologists, Empiric philosophers, etc., become dazzled by the glaring reflection of the sun, moon, electricity, etc., and deny the existence of the Supreme Lord, putting forward theories and different speculations about the creation, maintenance, and annihilation of everything material. The medical practitioner may deny the existence of the soul in the physiological bodily construction of an individual person, but he cannot give life to a dead body, even though all the mechanisms of the body exist even after death. The psychologist makes a serious study of the physiological conditions of the brain, as if the construction of the cere cerebral lump were the machine of the functioning mind. But in the dead body, the psychologist cannot bring back the function of the mind. These scientific studies of the cosmic manifestation or the bodily construction independent of the Supreme Lord, Lord are different reflective intellectual gymnastics only, but at the end, they're all illusion and nothing more. All such advancement of science and knowledge in the present context of material civilization is but an action of the covering influence of the illusory energy. The illusory energy has two phases of existence, namely, the covering influence and the throwing influence. By the throwing influence, the illusory energy throws the living entities into the darkness of ignorance. And by the covering influence, she covers the eyes of men with a poor fund of knowledge about the existence of the Supreme Person who enlightened the Supreme individual living being, Brahma. The identity of Brahma with the Supreme Lord is never claimed herein. And therefore, such a foolish claim by the man with a poor fund of knowledge is another display of the illusory energy of the Lord. The Lord says in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 16, text 18 to 20, that demoniac persons who deny the existence of the Lord are thrown more and more into the darkness of ignorance. And thus, such demoniac persons transmigrate life after life without any knowledge of the supreme personality of Godhead. 
I'll uh, stop there, and uh, in the, in the next uh, class we'll we'll uh, read the last part of the purport. It's a pretty long purport from Shri Prabhupada there. Omagana timirandasya gananjana shalakaya chakshura militam yena tasmai shri guave namaha shri chaitanya mano bishtam sapitam yena bhutale svayam rupa kadamayam dadati svapadantikam vandeham shri guru shri uta padakamalam shri guru vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sakana Raganatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitan Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sakana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam Stra He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Rade Rindavan Eshre Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Banchikalpa to you Vyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyavacha Hatitanan Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Pabuni Chananda Sri Advaita Gadadar Sri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Goravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyabadi Paschatya Desha Tarine Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 2 Chapter 9 Text 34 Viter tam yat pratieta na pratieta chatmani tad vidya ratmano mayam yatavaso yatatama. O Brahma, whatever appears to be of any value, if it is without relation to me, has no reality. Know it as my illusory energy, that reflection which appears to be in darkness. So, this is the second of the four seed verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. And, um, Yes, so the first seed verse, we can say essentially is about Krishna, and this one, it's Krishna speaking about Maya, the illusory energy. It's a, it's ener it's a type of energy of God that's designed, that's designed to move us to forget our connection with God. So it's not that the energy doesn't exist, it's an illusion. The energy really exists, the, the energy exists and it's an energy designed to, um, uh, so as Prabhupada emphasizes, we're always connected with Krishna. And when we're under the influence of Maya, then we forget that we're connected with Krishna. Okay. And it's not that we're just poor victims of that illusory energy. We got something in our heart where it's like, yes, I don't, I don't want to put Krishna in the center. I want to be the center, my own David Wolf God project. So then Krishna God, he says, okay, I have a particular type of energy that can help you do that. See how it goes. Okay. Right. So illusory energy that, um, so there's so many, so many uh, metaphors for this illusory energy. I remember back, uh, 2015 at the Frusella Home Ashram, we did a, a class entitled uh, uh, Maya, the Ultimate Virtual Reality, right? So we can take the virtual reality game where we, we get completely absorbed that we're, we are this character. So that's the idea, we're, we're in that virtual, re virtual reality is a, it's a um, um, metaphor, it's, it's, it, it's a metaphor that and, uh, and so, uh, but the, the real Maya is much smoother because we're completely convinced that this is, that I, Janasi Moho Yamaham Mameti, that I'm this body and this, uh, I, 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 I am this body and I'll be happy by satisfying the body and, and like, like that. <clears throat> so, 
So many, there's many metaphors. There's the dream, dream metaphor, right? Just like we, in a particular dream, we might have a body that's flying like a bird or enjoying in a palace or being chased by a tiger or a monster. And we're completely convinced we are that dream body. Then we wake up. So this Bhagavatam is about wake up, jeev jago, jeev jago, jeev jago. A pre, like kind of like the imagery we get here in this is, is uh, hmm. O Brahma, whatever appears to be of any value, if it is without relation to me, has no reality. No, it is my illusory energy, that reflection, which appears to be in darkness. <clears throat> so just like, just like, uh, okay, so if there's darkness and then we get the, the sunlight, it just dissipates the darkness. Krishna Surya Sama, Krishna's like the sun, Maya Haya Andakar, Maya is like darkness. All right. But let's say kind of the imagery we get here is let's say we get the sun reflected in a pot of water. Okay. Now the reflection, and we might, you know, we can look in a pot of water and the, the reflection of the sun. And so the reflection is real. It's real as a reflection. It's not the real thing. It's a shadow of the real thing. Shadow indicates substance. Shadow is controlled by substance, right? whether it's a shadow of a person's body or a, a chair or a table. Shadow indicates substance. Now, the reflection in the pot of water has very little capacity to, uh, to enlighten, to illuminate a, a, a pitch dark room compared to the sun. Okay. But we don't say the reflection is, is false it's a real reflection just like if we look in a mirror well there's a real reflection but the reflection isn't the substantial person that's looking into the mirror another amongst many metaphors to indicate well it's, it's another sort of reflection metaphor like we can we can conceive of a mirage in a desert as, as a reflection, right? A reflection of the light and the heat on the sand and like that. Okay, so, so there's this mirage that, oh, there's an oasis with a big pond and like that. The example is given sometimes animals, maybe humans also, but animals will, will go into the desert because they see a mirage, but the the, the pond of water is always another 50 yards in the, and the, the animal might chase the water and ultimately die. So chasing, chasing actual fulfillment, we, we die a spiritual death. Of course, the soul is eternal. So um, so there's no, there's no water. There's no water, but that's not true. There is water, water exists. It just doesn't exist in the desert. Okay. Now, Prabhupada refers to, there's a school of philosophers, Mayavadi philosophers. Mayavadi means like, there can, and Mayavadi, it's, it's not like a derogatory curse word. Like you could, like you could get newsletters of Mayavadis, like, like, like we are, sometimes it can seem like, like we're, we're cursing them out, Maya, you're Maya vibe. But no, there are groups previously based in India, but now we're, no, yes, we are Maya bodies. They're proud of it. Okay. So um, Maya vibe means the ultimate, like everything's illusion. So, so their philosophies is true in the sense of realizing there's no water in the desert and they stop there. Even you know, apart from calling, because, well, I don't know people named Maya Mayavadis, but you, we can go to so many yoga centers, new age places, different philosophers. And it's essentially like the whole world's illusion. And there's truth to that. There's truth there. There's truth to that. Um, but then they, so there's no water in the desert. There's no water in material life. It's a futile, it's a futile endeavor, but there is water. 
there is real water. There is real water. Chintamani prakasad masukapa vriksha laksha vriteshu surabir abhi palayantam. Lakshmi sahasrasatta sambrahma sevyamanam govinda madi pusham tamaham bajami. I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, the first progenitor who is tending the cows and abodes built of spiritual gems. Surrounded by millions of purpose trees, served with great reverence and affection by hundreds and thousands of Lakshmis or gopis. So there's real substantial atoms that are full of eternity, bliss, and cognizance, and real buildings and real loving relationships. So water exists, just not in the desert. And so to get to that real water, the real nectar, that means following a process, following a process to bring us out of, of the illusory energy. And it's, well, it starts with our sincerity. Like, yeah, I want that. I'm tired of this desert life. I'm tired of this desert life. I want the real thing. I want the real thing. So there's a process for that. And Mm. Yeah, so like, yeah, I want, I want to, I truly, at least I have some sparks of sincerity, I want to wake up from this dream body, I want to wake up from this illusion that I'm this dream body, there's no, there's no nectar there, there's no substance there, it's just, it's just a dream body, and so, so there's one major category of illusion, I am this body rather than I'm spirit soul. The body is a vehicle that I'm inhabiting right now, just like the driver of a car. And another category of illusion, Prabhupada uses the term, uh, the last illusory snare of the same Maya, the false claim, I am the supreme. Yeah. So it's also, it's also illusion. Okay, it's, it's, it's helpful to come out of the illusion that I am this body, Janasi Maho, Yamaha, Mameti, is it like that? And then that's another form of illusion that I am the super soul. I am, I am exactly the supreme, the absolute in every respect. Yes, that the, we are, uh, we, we, we do have similarities to the absolute, and but we're not exactly the same. And we're, we're different than the absolute and we're not completely different. So, um, so that's another, that's another illusion. That's another illusion uh, that, that we get attracted to because, because we still wanna be the enjoyer. Like this, this idea, I am the absolute, I am the supreme, is be, because of me that the stars and, and the moon are, are, are rotating. Uh, okay, that sort of thing. So I, I don't think we need to go too deep into our introspection uh, to see that, okay, like if I'm, if I'm challenged to find my car keys or to remember where I wrote down the password for entering there, okay, well, then how is it that I'm the omniscient personality of Godhead that is the source of the sun and the moon? Okay, so like we don't need to go deep into humility to realize I'm not the supreme. It doesn't require that much. So. At, at the same time, so yes, yeah, so, so there's it's, it's definitely a, a spiritual accomplishment to come to some realization I'm not the body, but then if that enjoying, but I still want to enjoy. And in one sense, it's even a grosser arrogance to think I am the absolute, I am the supreme. It's even a, a grosser arrogance than just someone like, no, I'm not the supreme. I just want to, I just want to do my job and uh, you know get a paycheck and have some beer and, and watch some football. I mean that so um so that that the, the core the core desire that like i'll, I'll be the center rather than surrender jivara supai krishna and that does I'll, I'll surrender to serve god with love and devotion that's that's the key that sincerity to get us out of maya and into krishna's internal energy what Prabhupada calls yoga maya yoga maya uh it, it's 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 another energy of the lord and which you know, Prabhupada discusses a lot. So, okay, so this, uh, well, there, I've, I've, there, there's the verse, uh, 
in the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam spoken by Lord Rishabh Shabade Pumsa Striya Mitu Nibhava Me Tam Tayura Mito Vidaya Granti Mahu Ato Kriyakshetra Sutapta Vitae Janasi Maho Yamaha Mameti. So kind of like the main glue that keeps us in Maya, keeps us in the dream. That's it's the uh, it's a sexual sexual attraction between men and women. Sexual attraction. That's like the main glue. It's the main glue. And then that leads to uh, um, that leads to uh, expanding the dream, ex expanding uh, the dream. Uh, I'm recalling. Uh, I, I've never watched the entire movie Zorba, but I watched a few clips of it. And so, so Zorba is this kind of very childlike, free spirited uh, Greek fellow. And uh, from what I understand, he doesn't strictly follow all the regulative principles, but that's okay. He's, he's serving his purpose. So, um, so anyhow, so then there's this kind of like, uh, yeah, very um, um, aristocratic professional like journalist or something from Britain. And somehow he's with Zorba and he asks, uh, and he asks one, they're like on a boat and it's things like there will be a, a dolphin uh, a, a dolphin jumping over the boat. And Zorba was like, wow, did you see that dolphin? Oh my God, that's great. And then the, and then the, uh, the British fellow is uh, like, oh, what? Oh, okay, yeah, no, I didn't notice. And Zorba was like, have you no life? Are you not alive to the wonders of nature? That sort of, that sort of rasa, that sort of relationship. And so, so at one point the British fellow asks him, uh, yes, uh, so uh, are you, uh, are you, are you married? Do you have children? And then Zorba says, yes, I'm married, children, and we have a land and a house. And then Zorba says, the whole catastrophe. Now, I'm just quoting Zorba here. I'm not, I'm not making any statement. I'm just quoting Zorba. Just, we just quote the Shastra. Okay, so, all right. And may, maybe no one here can relate to that Zorba's quote, but maybe some can. Okay, so the, the idea is that that doesn't, so household life can be a, a, a wonderful ashram for spiritual advancement, but um, largely that basic, that attraction between male and female expanding into sometimes the whole catastrophe. Um, and then that increases the janasya moho yamaham mameti. It increases the illusion, I am this body and this is me and this is my, and these are my relatives and this is my bank account and increases the whole illusion. And um, not, not that the soul is a victim, we, 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 we attract that. Okay. So it's just, Srila Rupa Goswami described that okay so like if we really want to take a stand take a stand to come out of the dream world of maya come out of the reflection and enter enter into that into substan the substantial relationships with the supreme and his associates that are the actual bliss of the soul, then uh, it's, it starts with vacho vegum. Vacho means what are we doing with our words? Are we just speaking nonsense that attracts more and more maya and influences others to be more and more in illusion? And a, actually I was, uh, I was speaking to someone yesterday and uh, I was very moved. I was a little bit uh, envious, uh, maybe more than a little bit. But anyhow, she, in in the coaching session, she came, she she came to a clear commitment and stand. And I'm not saying everyone should do this, but she for her, she came to a clear stand. She's getting, she's closing her Facebook account. I'm not saying Facebook has to be mine, but she just she got really clear in the session that she's dedicated to live purposefully. The next two months, she's in a life transition, even relocating her whole from to a different continent uh, with her husband and like that. And she, she got really clear that to, to support, she wants to live an internal life, a, a sober grave life, really contemplative. And she could see that for her, for her, it just, it's just a waste of time that, 
the Facebook thing. Doesn't mean for everyone it is. Okay. Um, so, um, but, and, and she got really clear. Uh, she got really clear that no, it just doesn't serve me. And like, yeah, she's, she's very popular. She's got thousands of friends. And she realized that this is, this is, a, this is an anarta. And anarta means that which is superfluous to the self. So, and it related to vibration that she wants the vajra, she wants the vibration, she speaks or writes that they're meaningful, they're purposeful, they're supportive of self-realization. So I was very impressed and inspired like that. Um, and you know, hoping to take that spirit into my life more than I do. <clears throat> so vajra vegam, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spiritual life starts with, uh, are we speaking gossip, nonsense, blah, blah, blah. Are we conscious with our words that they're dedicated to self-realization, nothing else. Vajavega, Manasakrota Vega. Um, consciously, consciously controlling. Controlling doesn't mean repressing out of fear, but consciously controlling the mind, the impetus to anger. Jiva Vegam Udara Pasta Vegam, then the line of three, the tongue, the belly, and the genitals. We're loose with our tongue. We'll probably overeat and then we're sexually agitated like that. So controlling these vagums, and that's that's a that's that's a foundation for self-realization and coming out of the illusion that we're this dream body and realizing who we are as the driver of the car, the owner of the finger, to use uh, um, metaphors that I, I, some of you have heard me use. Mm. Uh, yes, yeah. Mm. And so, and just an, another phrase in the purport that caught my eye and ear, that uh, Prabhupada, he, here's the, he says, the right conclusion of dovetailing everything in relationship with the Lord is called yoga maya or the energy of union. And the wrong conception of detaching a thing from its relationship with the Lord is called the Lord's Devi maya or maha maya. So the energy of union, that's, we often say, often say this bhakti yoga, this Bhagavatam practice, it's very world embracing. It's not world rejecting. It's not world rejecting. And there's a place in the Bhagavatam purports, I think six canto, where Prabhupada says, you know, one who sees everything as Maya rather than seeing everything as Krishna is an offender. So, because we can, we can think, okay, to use examples we give it, oh, Oh, this family, that's Maya. Facebook is Maya. That movie, that's Maya. No, that's not the right conception. That's not the right conception. Everything is Krishna's energy. Now the question is, how much realization do I have to realize Krishna that is a, how much realization do I have to relate to the Facebook energy, to relate to the children and spouse energy, such that the way I relate will enhance my self-realization and Christian consciousness. And that requires honesty, knowing where I'm at, knowing where I'm at, right? And so, uh, so um, okay, like in 1965, Srila Prabhupada, he, uh, he, he went to New York City, penniless like that. So you say, New York City, it's all Maya, but New York City, but Prabhupada, Prabhupada's realizing Krishna in the light of the sun and the moon. He's realizing Krishna in the heart of all the residents of New York City and Europe and America. And he's relating in such a way where he's awakening that fire of Krishna consciousness um, that, that's natural in the heart. So that requires realization, potency. Right? So most everyone else might go to New York City and just fall deeper into illusion about the goal of life is consumerism or something like that. So, um, okay, yeah. So that's, that's the science. So, so it's not world rejecting. It's about cultivating our self-realization or Krishna consciousness so that more and more each day or at least each year, I mean, influenced by the modes of nature, our, growth, our spiritual growth curve might not be and might be really flat, but, uh, but as we practice the process with sincerity, then at least, oh, okay, at least if I look back compared to a month ago, a year ago, five years ago, the curve is going up. It's not necessarily like, like the gopis, it's described their love for Krishna 
is increasing millions of times each moment. So it's not like we're catching up to them. Okay. So, um, but even, yeah, I don't have any love uh, for Krishna and Prabhupada, but you know, even if he, here we are, we're discussing Srimad Bhagavatam on a Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon or Sunday, Sunday evening for some of you. Um, so that shows some love. The Prabhupada makes it clear that shows some sparks of love. It's the beginning of love. So we, we must have something in there. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prima Sajja Kabunai Shravanani Shuddha Chitta Kariye Udai. Love of Krishna is naturally situated in the hearts of all living entities. It's not something to be artificially imposed external from some external source. And it's awakened from this process of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And as we become, just like uh, the example, like if there's a tender seedling, then it needs to be very tightly protected. And so we want to protect our tender seedling of Krishna consciousness. Even a baby squirrel could destroy a tender seedling. Okay. But then, okay, but the seedling will grow up by, through protection and watering and sunlight, proper care, nurturing. The tender seedling will grow into a mighty redwood. And then a redwood, well, a redwood doesn't, is not damaged by the squirrel. Even there can be a 120 mile hurricane, probably the redwoods not affected. Okay, so, so we don't want to imitate Srila Prabhupada and be artificially bold at the same time. We, we do want to follow, we, we, do want to, we, we do want to follow the basic principle of cultivating deeper and deeper Krishna consciousness each day. And so we become stronger and stronger and able, able to go anywhere and through spiritual osmosis, give self-realization rather than go anywhere and get all confused, okay? So it's described, Narada Muni describes in the first canto to his disciple, Srila Vyasadeva, Irami Pumsa Astapasa Shutasi Vasuktasya Svitasya Chaburi Datayo Avichya Torta Kavibir Nivupito Yaduta Mashloka Gunanu Vardhanam. So, because Prabhupada talks about physiologists and psychologists and different uh, professions. So we could falsely say, that's all Maya, that's all Maya. No, so, uh, so, so a, um, uh, any profession, practically, practically any profession. So Narada Muni, he says, you're a chemist. So use chemistry in Krishna consciousness. You're a, a businessman or a businesswoman. Use your capacities in Krishna consciousness and self-realization for glorification of God. You're, you're a social worker, you're an economist, you're a psychologist, you're a physician, that you're a teacher, you're an educator. Not, so these are natural human professions, human occupations. You work, you work in agriculture, in construction, you work in any field, Narada Muni goes. No, not, not to reject it artificially in the name of spirituality, that's like saying, that's just like the analogy we give, right? That, okay, there's, there's, no, there's no water in the desert. True, there's no water in the desert, but there is water. There is water. And so we, we experience the nec that nectarian water when we more and more learn in a grounded way to engage our propensities, our qualities, God-given propensities and qualities in the service of the Supreme, the supreme Personality of Godhead. Again, this is, it's not, this is not a process of negation. It's a process of affirmation and it's a science. Prabhupada, Prabhupada talks about attempts at scientific endeavor here that neglect to put the one in front of the string of zeros. But again, in whatever profession we are, a science, learn the art and science to put the one that gives value in front of the string of zeros in whatever we're doing, in whatever we're doing. Well, Prabhupada talks about consciousness here. Uh, the medical practitioner may deny the existence of the soul and the physiological bodily construction of an individual person, but he cannot give life to a dead body, even though all the mechanisms of the body exist even after death. The psychologist makes a serious study of the physiological conditions of the brain 
as if the construction of the cerebral lump were the machine of the functional mind. But in the dead body, the psychologist cannot bring back the function of the mind. Mm. The scientific studies of the cosmic manifestation or the bodily construction independent of the Supreme Lord are different reflective intellectual gymnastics only. But at the end, they're all illusion and nothing more. Yeah, just like, just like, uh, okay, like electric, as a metaphor, electricity can flow through the uh, light bulb, the uh, filament made of tungsten or whatever they make light bulbs of these days. Okay, so we could wrongly conclude, ah, the light bulb is producing electricity. No, no, electricity exists separate from the light bulb. Electricity exists separate from the light bulb. Um, and electricity can flow through a particular, uh, yes, through a, a particular mechanical arrangement called a light bulb. But if a light bulb doesn't exist, doesn't mean electricity doesn't do. So similarly, consciousness can manifest through this contraption called the human brain and the human body. And consciousness exists separate from all of this. Avinasi tutadvidi yena sarvamidam tata. Uh, so Krishna says that no, that which pervades the consciousness, that the soul, that which pervades the entire body, the soul is conscious and the soul is consciousness. Both are true. That which pervades the entire body is never destroyed. Only the material body of the indestructible, indestructible, measurable, and eternal spirit soul is subject to destruction. Therefore, Arjuna, fight, fight. Um, do do your service. Don't don't don't, don't withdraw in the name of some um, life negating philosophy. And so, and just if we, because you know, a, a lot of times in the name of rational science, the idea is well, we can do an experiment and we can actually see. It's not just belief, right? So Prabhupada's making just a very simple but profound point there. Okay. So some theories in the, some theories of the, in the name of science is like, um, okay, so life comes from a combination of matter. Oh, okay. So in laboratory, combine matter and create something that's life. It doesn't need to be a human. Create a mosquito, go. Or in nature, we see trillions and trillions and trillions of example of life coming from life. We, we came from parents who are alive, who came from parents, their parents who are alive. Uh, a, a, a seed grows a tree, the seed comes from a tree that's alive. Trillions and trillions of empirical examples of life coming from life, zero examples in nature or laboratory of life coming from dead matter. Yet somehow the, the bewildered conception is scientific people who only believe what they can see, they know that life comes from matter. It's really topsy-turvy or Let's say another, an, another, uh, uh, yeah, theory. In, in, in uh, well, it doesn't really meet the criteria of scientific theory. We could call it uh, fantasy. That um, okay, that uh, one species evolves into another. Yeah, everyone scientific knows that because in science we believe what we can see through experiment. So we've all seen, we've all seen so many examples of. Tomatoes changing into monkeys. Well, no, actually, actually we haven't seen it. Again, neither in nature or the laboratory has anyone ever seen, I'm not saying this proves it didn't happen, but I'm saying that a thinking person should have doubts about the whole concept. No one has ever seen one species evolve into another in nature or laboratory. Okay, so, of course, the, the Vedas in the Padma Purana does, do describe evolution. And it, it describes, yeah, it, it's evolution of the spirit soul from one body to another, just like, like a person might live in a one bedroom efficiency apartment and then move to a two bedroom, then move to a, a three bedroom house and then, and then move to a five bedroom house. But it's not that the efficiency apartment morphs into the five bedroom house. The person might move. Sometimes it's described that the fact that um, the fact 
the fact that there's so many varieties of life forms it, it clearly proves evolution. I, I never caterpillar turning into butterfly. Okay, yes. My, my understanding is that that's one species. That's, that's one species, yes. That, that, uh, it's, that, that's my understanding there. So, well, just like we could see, we could see that, um, say there, there are so many varieties of motor vehicles, right? So many varieties of motor vehicles. There's a, a moped, there's a Harley Davidson motorcycle, and there's mini compacts and there's military tanks and there's uh, there's four door sedans so many right so some can say so that's proof that the that the small motorcycle evolved into the the two door compact which developed no so many varieties of motor vehicles indicates that there's an intelligent designer that designed different forms for different purposes uh, I, I saw a chat and um, George, you have a question or a comment. I see your hand up. No, no. Hey, Krishna Dudavinda. It's actually, it's actually Danielle. Hey, Danielle. I, I'm sorry. I, I, um, I didn't realize how this works. So maybe I preemptively jumped the gun. Um, I was just, I was just looking, listening to your, to your message this morning, and I realized this is touching on something that I've been thinking about quite a bit, which is making the material spiritual and how that works in a practical sense. Yes. Um, so yeah, like thinking about spiritualizing things that were not beforehand and that are very central to devotional life. It's a, it's kind of an interesting, like, when does that tipping point happen? So like in Greek Orthodoxy, they talk about icons looking at you yeah just like the deities take darshan you know they can like actually see the, the people who are devoting and prostrating themselves before the deities yeah obviously the marble statues or the pieces of brass or the the planks of wood are not i mean they're not like looking at people i mean maybe in some sense yeah but they're not like inhabited by the lord you know, like a like a deity or a saintly picture of a you know, Greek Orthodox saint or Prabhupada's Murti, like, how does that, like, I don't know, like, when does it, how is the magic happening, I guess? Like, when does the Lord transform? And then, you know what I mean? Like, how does, how does this, like, what is this recipe? Does it come from the love and the, and the desire for union with the Lord? Like, what is it? Uh -huh. you're, I, you're talking about, like, the, the deity, the, the form of the deity. That's my yeah. And yeah, that's. Uh, I appreciate the question. I, d I don't have much realization, but I'll, I'll I'll share you know what what I've understood from Prabhupada. I don't have much realization. So just as um, the name of God, the name of Krishna is non different from Krishna. So similarly, the authorized deity form of Krishna is non different from Krishna. Now we might realize that or not according to our, you know our consciousness, our filters or lack of filters. So just as like, okay, like Krishna appears in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna appears in the form of the sound vibration, Hare Krishna. So, so Krishna, God being unlimited, if he chooses, he can, he can appear in the form of stone or wood or the or, or, or the mental energy of when we're imagining his form in our mind, he can appear in the form of paint. They're all his energies. So he can appear in his fullness in, in any of his energies. And that's what the deity form is about. That as far as let's call it the form of Krishna and Goloka Vrindavan, where we, we tend to not have eyes to realize that, but we, we okay, we, we're accustomed to look at paint or stone or wood or brass. And so he can appear there and, and, and he does in, in the authorized deity form, just as he appears in sound vibration. 
And so I, I, I like the term you use, Danielle, that like the, the icons, the, the icons, the, uh, the deities uh, see us. Yeah, I remember in uh, 2015, Marie, Malini and I, we were in Nizhny Novgorod, Russia, teaching a foundational seminar. And the day before the foundational, our host, Felix, and Asya and Margarita, our host gave us a tour of uh, Nizhny. And Nizhny, I guess it's, it's Russian Orthodox. Some, some similarities to Grifo or Kadas, but they're, they're heavy on the icons. And very, you know, I, I felt potency there. We, we, we toured different churches and things like that. Um, have, yeah, so, uh, so I like how you said that, because sometimes I can say, I'm going to the temple or I'm going to my temple room to see the deity. But in some ways that's not true because I don't see the deity. <laughs> uh, I'm probably seeing, you know, stone and wood and paint. But okay, in one sense, I'm going for the deity to see me. Not that it's anything special to see me, but I'm going for Prabhupada and Lord Chaitanya and the Panchatav and Radha Krishna, kind of like, okay, look, I'm here, I've showed up, I'm trying, I'm doing something. Okay, I'm, I'm before you and I'm, you know, and, and my, I, I do trust my eyes are getting purified, my consciousness is getting purified by seeing these forms even just as my, my tongue and my consciousness is getting purified when, um, um, when I chant the holy name, even though I have very little realization of how the holy name is non-different from Krishna. So, so Krishna, a part of, part of all powerful, he's capable to appear in his fullness in any of his energies, sound vibration, stone, wood, mental energy. And, uh, and then again, then he's, we realize his appearance in the, in the authorized deity form uh, to the extent that, that we're pure, pure in heart. That's very helpful. Thank you, Dirgavinda. I appreciate the question. Thank you, Daniel. I see, I see, uh, I see there's a chat that uh, caterpillar turning into butterfly. So caterpillar turning into butterfly. Yeah, my, my, my understanding on that is well, in one sense, I, I think it affirms the point we were making that, because the point we're making is that whether in laboratory or in nature, there's no example of through evolution, one species turning into another. So my understanding is just like, sure, we, we, we might find a baby elephant <laughs> changing into a, in, into a huge elephant you know, over a few decades. And so that's, that's the growth process and the caterpillar butterfly thing. It has a particularly interesting trans, transmorphing growth process, but that, that, that's my understanding. It's, it's part of its natural material growth process. But, uh, but, but, it, but it's not like, uh, okay, through generations, through generations and generations, the caterpillar butterfly thing, okay, 200 years later or 20 years later, now they're, now it's be, now they're becoming dogs and cats. No, we, we, we don't see that. They, they stay caterpillar butterfly, caterpillar, caterpillar black butterfly. Or even like you would think that they're doing these experiments in laboratories, uh, you know, maybe for 150 years now, I mean, a different level of sophistication in the past hundred years. So something with like really quick lifespans, like, I don't know, bacteria, me amoebas, paramecium. So you would think, because you might say, yeah, well in nature, because you know, it's a slow process, but there you, you got time for like probably hundreds of thousands of generations since you started, but there's no change of species. Yeah, there can be adaptations of like, oh, oh, the, the, uh, the tsetse fly, uh, the tsetse flies are a little bigger when you do that. But they, yeah, again, they, they never, they never become tomatoes or, or, um, uh, or antelope or something. I'm not, I mean, not, I mean, I, that's what, that's what we should see if we're looking at empirical evidence. So thanks for the butterfly question. <clears throat> I was thinking in the bag of a time it's explained like the different way life come. Yeah. Like the, the example of the turtles and eggs and you know, so many examples and for the butterfly and, uh, uh, and uh, caterpillar, it seems that I've been so romanticized 
Yeah. But we lose the thread because like, if we see maggots, for example, in a piece of rotten something, they are fully independent and they look like adult uh, insect. Yeah. And at one point or another, they do transform into flies. Mm, interesting. Not as romantic, but yeah, that's romantic. that means that it is a form of, you know, like life you know, evolving from, you know, ba ba babies, even so the maggots are fully independent and fully living, evolving into, not evolving, but like going into their adult transformation into a fly. Yeah, I think so. Thanks for not that. Not that pretty. Not that pretty, yeah, thanks for that example. It's the, uh, it's, uh, it, it gives nice perspective and uh, I'm just, yeah, uh, uh, Yours was back in 2003. Um, uh, I did, uh, uh, Malini designed the first Safatov website, and it was the caterpillar into butterfly theme. So, so yeah, it's it's a very uh, 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 visionary uh, example like that. At the same time, we can see that uh, yeah, it's 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 not a, it's not a sign of through evolutionary process one species changing into another. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you. Any other comments or questions, realizations anyone wants to ask or share? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So we are on this topic of maggots to flies and caterpillars, to butterpillars. Yeah. Caterpillars, butter, butterpillars, butterflies. Um, so then the thought that comes to mind is um, there being whatever, I guess, fossil records or whatever other kinds of records, um, showing species that, um, at least supposedly existed at some point that no longer exist. And I think that maybe that's also part of the theory that, okay, there was all these species that existed then that don't exist now and, um, species that there's records of now that they at least don't have old records of um, like easy example would be dinosaurs. I don't know if the Bhagavatam says yes, dinosaurs are real or not. That, that would be a question I have for you. Uh, but the other question is um, how can it be explained, right? That there are signs that these species existed before that don't exist now and signs that certain species exist now that there's no signs that they existed before. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ezzy. Thank, thanks for your question. Um, your questions. I appreciate them. Okay. Well, uh, a, a few things come to mind. So one is, let's be clear, the fossil record does not support Darwinian evolution. Now you say, well, that's just your opinion. Well, no, it's the evolutionist opinion. Now, sure, that's not what they teach you in fourth grade or high school or biology 101 in college. But if, if you go to their conferences, they know it, they know it. So for example, around late 60s, early 70s, they came up with a new theory called punctuated equilibrium. So what is that theory that the evolutionary evolutionary biologists came up with punctuated equilibrium. What is that theory and how come they needed to think of it? Um, okay, so uh, so punctuated equilibrium, they needed to come up with it because by that time, 50, 60, 70, it was very clear. The fossil record does not support evolution. So punctuated equilibrium is a theory where the evidence of the truth of the theory is that there's no evidence. I'm not just making this stuff up. This is going on in the name of science. You can look it up, go to Wikipedia, wherever you need to go. Okay, so basically, because they saw the whole idea of like intermediate species and the fossil record will, will reveal that. And yeah, yeah, well, it didn't, it didn't at all. So it, it didn't at all. So then they came up with this theory, punctuated equilibrium is that, well, it didn't happen gradually, like in, in the context of geological time, there was maybe some real sudden event like a meteor or something. 
And so one species changed into another quickly from the point of view of geological time, happened quickly. And the proof is that there's no fossil evidence. They're really saying that, and they've been saying it for 50 years. Again, they don't teach that in high school because it's too ridiculous, okay? So what they came up with this theory, punctuated equilibrium, because they wanted to try to explain why the fossil record does not support gradual evolution. So the, the evidence of the theory is that there's no evidence in the fossil record, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, and then, um, so, now, let's understand, like, you know, we, we have access to even the, the fossil record, if we look statistically, what, what, what has been dug up so far, what has been dug up from the past, it's, I, I, I don't know how many decimals before the zero, but like 0.00001% of, of what exists now and the earth that's exists in the past. So to make any sort of theories of what existed, what exists now, what they're discovering new, every year they're discovering new species, every year discovering lots of new species. So no, but now we know there, we, that doesn't exist, even now. Okay. And as far as you know, what's been dug up to study the past, it's just like 0.0001%. So we can try to derive some, some, some theory on that. Um, there's clearly knowledge filter. I, I can send details. I don't have them in my head. There's plenty of fossils, fossil record that clearly indicates that, that modern type humans existed millions and millions and tens of millions of years ago. And so, and then if someone discovers it and actually writes about it, then they're then they're blacklisted and they're, they're, they're called kooky like that. But the standard of evidence is, uh, is very, uh, is, is the same standard as other evidence that they'll accept that support their theory regularly, regularly. If we follow like, right, like every year or two, they need to revise their theories about when modern humans came into existence, always pushing it back towards the beta conclusion. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, even apart just within, even apart from what, what we have access to, even within the dimensions we have access to, there are all sorts of, if, if we look at Vedic cosmology, even about this planet, Bharat Varsh, Jambu Dvip, the Bhumandala planetary system. It, it's not like we just, like, it's not so, well, because we don't have spiritual eyes, we can't see the soul or we can't see Krishna, apart from that. There is so many material dimensions we have no access to again until we shift our consciousness. And that's all described in the Bhagavatam. And even just in mundane terms where we do have access to, they're discovering new species every year, lots of them. And so, but no, we know that that species doesn't exist. That's, it's just like, it's conjecture, it's speculation. And the conclusions based on speculation in, in those fields are literally changing every year. Uh, so those are a few thoughts. And I'm, you know, I, I, I'm, I, can, I can give you books, articles, magazines, links, if, if, if you want to see more into the details of that. But th those are a few principles. Hi, Krishna. Thank you. It's, um, it's like mind bending and mind blowing. Um, like to hear a broader perspective right about how like oh yeah we have such little evidence and like this and like theories are uh, so uh proudly or confidently shared and to also to see like how strong that conditioning is in me and hearing something and um like even in in seeing how what you say makes sense to me logically like yeah we have such little evidence it's like how the atom used to be like oh we think it's kind of like a chocolate chip cookie and i was like oh no it's more like a tiny center and then like a cloud around it and um yeah it's, it's just so mind-bending that it's this conditioning is so strong um in me so thank you for your answer it's uh satisfying and Malini wants to say something thank you thank you Esther. 
Yes, earlier you were describing that there is um, a description of evolution in a Veda, which is the evolution of consciousness. Yes. So naturally, because that evolution is there, to me it sounds um, like logical that that evolution of consciousness will create different apartments. Yeah. Like you were saying, like, or vehicle, like, yeah, maybe some places there is many vehicles, like many Muppets, and there is some places there is none because the evolution of the consciousness of the people inhabiting those places. So similarly, the consciousness that created, for example, the dinosaur that is, is speaking, yeah. It, it may it may not have that consciousness may not be uh, um, alive anymore. And however, maybe there is more and more consciousness of tomatoes, uh, roaches, you know, <laughs> like that. Yeah. And uh, roaches are bigger and bigger. <laughs> well, it, it, the evolution is there in the consciousness, which naturally will lead to. A different type of dwelling and apartment or car being uh, created and disappearing. Thanks, thanks for that, Malini. I appreciate the connection between those examples. Yeah, I, th thanks for that. And I'll say that, yeah, may maybe the consciousness of dinosaurs doesn't exist in the particular sphere within our narrow vision. Mm -hmm. But, it, but it, exi it exists somewhere exists. in the universe. Mm -hmm. it, it's clear that the 8,400,000 species always exist within the material creation. But it, might, it might, yeah, there might not be dinosaur consciousness and dinosaur bodies in our neighborhood mm -hmm. at this yeah. time. Like, you know, you go to India, there's so many people with little motorbike or mopeds and yeah. things like that, and there are millions of them. And you know, in the West, until recently, there was none, mm. and now it's going again. Yeah, I, I, I love that example. Thank you, Malini and Eze. All right, Krishna. Ladini Shakti. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, I like this discussion very much. I also grew up on evolution theory, and like the point that I really like about this discussion is uh, like how Darwin came up with creating this evolution theory. Yeah. And so his daughter died, his four-year-old daughter died, and he was really angry with God. Yeah, yeah. It was like sort of like, okay, you killed my daughter, I'm going to kill you. That was his plan. And so he came up with this evolution theory. And it's like exactly what we are reading in this purport, that like, like there is no Maya, that's what I'm getting from this before. There is no Maya, only our point of view. Mm -hmm. Like like when we see something disconnected from Krishna, then that's Maya. But otherwise, otherwise there is no such a thing as Maya. But then Maya is like having the flowing potency and the covering potency. And if you want that, like if the desire is like, okay, I want to like make proof that there is no God, I can do it. And of course it's like even scientifically nonsense but Maya helps us. Maya helps us to believe it. Like, like the evidence is that there is no evidence. Yes, I believe it. So Maya, Maya, like really helps us believe things that are like so unconceivable. You know, it's like, oh, you believe in God? You must have like a lot of blind faith. <laughs> but really, but really, to like believe in the scientific things that requires so much blind faith is unconceivable and it's all like Maya potency. Like Prabhupada says Maya is amazing. And it really is like, it helps us to believe like so many nonsense. I appreciate everything you share, Ladini Shakti. Yeah, thanks for that. And you're giving some, you're giving some history from, from the biography of, of Charles Darwin. And he had some emotional stuff going on or we can empathize with his pain and you know, like that. But we can see, like, okay, and he's he also he had a big brain, you know, probably compared to us, he has a big brain like that, you know, and like that. To, but to see that it's he's not going to come up with perfect knowledge because he got other agendas, and so in Bhagavatam you get perfect knowledge. And I think, uh, I, think I heard he, he he even got this idea from the Vedas, 
Like, yeah, yeah. Prabhupada specifically said that Darwin stole the idea from Padma Purana and he took consciousness, he took the one out, he, he took consciousness out of it. But Prabhupada said Darwin got it from the Padma Purana. Thank you, Ladini Shakti. Um, let's see, I'm just saying, so uh, Esti, who I'm guessing is Rukmini, writes, Nothing that ever existed is lost on the energetic level. Maya supports any desire into being. Thanks for that, Hare Krishna. Parampara Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So the topic of uh, evolution is always uh, exciting to talk about. Um, I... Um, I know that I grew up with, you know, evolution and then, you know, in, in coming to Krishna consciousness, then, uh, you know, so much of, uh, at least like an early stage of Krishna consciousness is to, or my Krishna consciousness and perhaps for others is kind of challenging. Um, those assumptions that, that conditioning of, you know, evolution, you know, evolution comes if you further, if you, if you go, if you follow evolution back, then it's okay. Where does okay? So, uh, uh, one species evolves from another. That's life from life. But where does life come from uh, initially? So then that's that's the theory of life from chemicals. You know, life coming from some chemical cons, cons, uh, mixture of um, uh, proteins and amino acids or whatever. You know, somehow somehow there's like a combination that creates life. And then consciousness evolves, and so that, that's another part of it. And then, okay, so where, but where do those chemicals, where does the universe come from at all? That's the Big Bang. So it's like we have this trinity of conditioning, you know, from science that we that we get of the Big Bang, and then life coming from chemicals, you know, just uh, magical. It's very magical, um, and then, and then evolution of the species to get to where we are now and consciousness evolves somewhere you know in there and um so so much of a big part of uh initial process of krishna consciousness or like philosophically you know understanding is to like challenge those um theories and like refute them and first to just question the conditioning okay like okay this is what i've been uh, this is an assumption that i've had this is what i've learned and, you know, kind of like with Satvato process, like, you know, raise awareness and, okay, um, where did I get this from? And is it, does it work for me? And, you know, and, and to make a choice to be more conscious about my conditioning and, and what I'm thinking and believing and the effects that it has on my uh, beliefs about myself, you know, because if we're just, you know, chemicals that happen, this magic, you know, it's like, how much value do I have as an individual? So anyway, all that kind of process um, and then as I went, then then like, so it's kind of like, okay, so refuting, challenging those, those uh, scientific dogma, trinity of beliefs. And then as process go, my process went on, then I'm like reading at Prabhupada's, at least like one of Prabhupada's purports and maybe other places where he describes that at one time there was the earth was uh, our earth planet or this this place was covered by water and there was only aquatic living entities uh were were existing uh on this planet so only aquatic living entities were existing on this planet and so it's like wow that's actually that's actually can be a line like you can match that up with evolution and say okay uh, so yeah, the, a certain time, the, according to the consciousness of the souls that were on this planet, there was only aquatic bodies available, um, and that lines up with evolution. That's interesting. And then, um, you know, the Big Bang can even be, you know, traced back to like, you could kind of line that up with um, the Vedas, with like the inhalation and exhalation of, of Vishnu. It's like, you know, that's the universe is expanding from that big bang that could be like the, the expansion of the breath of you know Mahavishnu so like there's ways to to line it up and, and I was like well how come how come there's 
at least maybe initially, there's not that much emphasis. Like, how come we don't just go straight there to like, no, look, evolution and Krishna consciousness, they can go together because of this and that. And, and you know, the Big Bang, like, like how come, at least my process and maybe for others, we don't go there automatically to just say like, oh, no, evolution and Krishna consciousness is all the same. And, and I, my, my sense of it or my response my idea is that that um, it's really important to challenge those conditioning because of the, those conditioning is coming from the place of you know there is no god and that god wasn't in charge god's not in charge of evolution and even if it's like well we can find a way to understand how evolution could have could have worked according to the vedas and, and the different species coming into existence according to the different consciousness the evolution of consciousness and we can line everything up and the big bang and everything like that it's really important to kind of reject or refute or you know at least question like where that first assumption is coming from as kind of a godless conception and to and to like accept a god-centered conception uh so i'm just realizing that was important in my process and i imagine that like that's my response to my question of like well how come we don't just go straight there um I hope that makes sense what I'm trying to say. I, I think for me it does. I, I appreciate uh, where you went with it. I appreciate wh what you shared and your question and your response to your question. I liked very much your, your use of the word Trinity. I thought it was a very clever use of the word Trinity. And um, yeah, yeah. So there's different descriptions in Bhagavatam Vedas that, that do kind of match descriptions of the modern science's conception of evolution saying that the yeah, big bang big bang and and then the, you, you pointed to a core point but so in most of the modern logical positivist theories they're taking conscious what speak of god they're taking consciousness out of it so we want to question that and then yeah right because like because like there's the idea and i heard like even maybe the Pope uh, said like, you know, we, we accept evolution and just God, God started it. And I'd be okay with that, but even, even just from my rational scientific mind for whatever it's worth, no, it, it, even apart from the God, like, no, it, 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 I, I really don't see the evidence. I don't see the math behind it. I, I don't see the evidence. Um, so um, yeah, yeah. So, so, and then, you know, what you shared, as a and Malini Ladini shared that pra Prabhupada was just uh, empowered an expert to 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 shake up paradigms that pa paradigm means it's a, just like you know we like gravity we don't even think about it but like a paradigm to, to really get us to look at the core paradigms not just the belief systems but the overarching underlying belief systems that form my petty belief system and so Prabhupada just like got us to look at that. And that's, that's, that's transformation. So, uh, yeah, so, and, 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 and by, by just looking at what are the assumptions around the Trinity, Big Bang, life from chemicals, it, consciousness from matter. And so, uh, so it, it, sh it shake up, shakes up our paradigm and gets us to really come alive and take an honest look. Thank you. Thank you, Prampra. I see. Uh, okay. Ladini wrote, how does a species appear in the earth for the first time? For example, after new creation, what is first chicken or egg? Okay. Um, well, okay. Speaking from my understanding of Bhagavatam and that's all there in the Bhagavatam, even this term earth, earth can mean at least four things, but more like six or seven. Okay. Cause we have, okay. There's our conception of earth this, you know, this globe that's kind of between Mars and Venus and like that. And that conception is there in the Bhagavatam. And then there's other dimensional perspectives of Earth. One of them is Bharata Varsh, another is Jambudvip, another is the Bhumandala planetary system. A, a book that addresses the different, the several different dimensional perspectives of Earth um, as described in the Bhagavatam is, and, and, and those perspectives include our perspective, you know, uh, like th that we learned in 
astronomy and geography and things like that, ge geology. Uh, the book uh, Mis uh, uh, Mysteries of the Sacred Universe, which is, it, it explains the Bhagavatam. In, so what do we mean by earth? And then, you know, and then how, how do the species start? That's described with starting with Brahma and then Manu and then Daksha and the, the different Prajapadis. And there's some Prajapadis who they're giving birth to the snakes and scorpions and, and some Prajapadis are giving birth to the aquatics. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying I have a clear, crisp understanding, but it, it is described in different places in the Bhagavatam. <clears throat> Thank you, Lady. Like a Prajapati looks like human and he gives eggs and then from those eggs are born all, all sorts of different snakes and stuff. Yeah. Are out. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you all for this enlivening discussion and energizing our spiritual process. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. 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 Dila Prabhupada Kijai, Hari Kijai. Thank you, Prabhupada.